Having bird feeders up in your yard can be a wonderful experience. A nice way to relax from the comfort of your own home as you watch the various birds coming and going. One of the greatest things about having feeders is the fact that you never really know who may show up. Sometimes it can be a bird not common in your area that is out of range, which is always exciting since it comes completely unexpected and isn't something you normally see. Another cool thing is getting to witness the hidden hierarchy of feeder birds like chickadees, as well as some other interesting behavior from other birds. It's often thought that backyard bird feeding is best done only during summer, not in winter, but that definitely isn't the case. If anything, winter can be the best time to feed our feathered friends. Nothing better than getting a bright dose of birds like blue jays or evening grosbeaks visiting showing off their gorgeous colors against the snowy backdrop, like a ray of sunshine on those short, darker days. And of course, watching the little birds like goldfinches is always a delight. Not to mention, providing feeders really help to give birds some extra food during those cold days, times when food is scarce. They get some relief and we get some enjoyment. One thing people are often concerned about though when it comes to providing feeders for birds is whether or not they will become dependent on them. A reasonable thing to be concerned about. I mean, we certainly do not want to cause birds to become dependent on feeders to the point that they no longer search for natural food sources. So do they or not? The short answer is no, you don't have to worry about birds becoming so dependent on feeders if you do it right. If you're anything like me, you're probably wanting a more thorough answer that includes information from some research. If that's you, well, you are in luck because there has been studies done over the years. What they have found is that birds that visit feeders don't just stick there all day. They do move around the surrounding area searching for natural food sources. Birds, it turns out, can adapt very quickly to changes in supply, too. An in-depth study that was done in the mid-1980s by wildlife ecologist Stanley Temple and his student at the time, Margaret Brittingham, is where a lot of this knowledge came from. They color banded several hundred black-capped chickadees in the Wisconsin woods. Two specially designed feeders were set up for the chickadees to come back and forth to. Stanley and Margaret laboriously counted the sunflower seeds each bird ate. What they found surprised them. The chickadees acquired only 21% of their daily energy requirements from the feeders. So if the chickadees only received roughly 20% of their daily requirements from feeders, then they obviously are getting food elsewhere. You see, over the eons, birds learn that it is monumental to their survival for them to sample various food sources in the environment, always seeking out backup options in a changeable world rather than sticking to just a single short-lived food source. Smart. What's more is that when Temple and Brenningham removed a feeder they had kept full for 25 years from one of their study areas, the chickadees still fared well over winter, as well as those in remote areas where there aren't any feeders. Birds do not forget how to forage just because there are handouts available. It should be said though that just because chickadees don't become dependent doesn't mean other birds won't, especially species that hang around in urban or suburban habitats where natural food sources may not be as sufficient. So think birds like house finch, house sparrow, house wren, junco, morning doves, and others. These could possibly become dependent, probably some more than others. Also, migratory birds that end up in new, unknown areas, places that wouldn't have sources of the kind of food they depend on, may rely so much more on handouts than resident birds of that area. I do feel as though feeders should be provided in moderation, Letting them go dry for a few days or even weeks is good practice. Another time that birds seem to be really reliant on feeders is during extreme weather like very cold temperatures or when it's stormy. Even then, they have many adaptations and other clever ways of getting by in the absence of feeders. I did a video going into some great depth on how birds survive winter. For those interested, a link will be in the description of this video. As I mentioned in older videos of mine, chickadees with access to a feeder during harsh winters, their chances of surviving nearly doubled. So while I do let feeders go dry from time to time, during a cold snap or stormy weather, I make a point of keeping the feeders going. When the weather is better though, let the feeders go dry for a while. I can tell you from experience that they will do just fine if you cannot get the feeders topped up for a few days. Most birds will find food elsewhere. 
Over summer, I rarely have feeders going. It should be said, though, that even in summer, feeders can be of great help for birds due to them having a family to raise. The reason I don't tend to have feeders going in summer, though, is mainly because of a disease called Trichomonas gallinae, also referred to as frounce sometimes, a highly infectious disease that thrives in warm temperatures and affects many species of birds, especially finches. We've been seeing outbreaks of this over the last few years in Atlantic Canada when mild temperatures are around. Feeders should never be up during times like that. Anyway, it is my thought that feeding birds as long as it's done in moderation and is kept sanitary will cause no ill effects to them. The need to find natural food sources is so ingrained and hardwired in birds. Something to be mindful of though, like any food, bird seed can spoil over time, especially if it isn't stored properly. Moldy, mildewed seeds are not healthy for birds and old seeds dry out, making them less appetizing. What's more is that seeds can attract pests and rodents. But if you use proper storage practices, seeds can last for several weeks or months and be perfectly okay to serve to the birds. Make sure to always toss spoiled or old seeds before refilling your feeders too. I'm in the middle of making a video going into the importance of keeping bird feeders sanitary, so stay tuned for some helpful information. Another thing people assume is that as long as there is feeders going, birds will not migrate. That's not the case. It doesn't matter how much food is available. When it's time to go, it's time to go. Birds that migrate depend on the weather, daylight, and their genetic instincts to begin migration. Feeders being present during migration season actually give them a much needed energy boost to help them survive their long journeys. A good reason to keep them going over that time. I'd also like to share my own personal experience with regards to feeding the birds I know. As a lot of you already know, I have a pretty unique close relationship with various birds in a woods that I've been regularly visiting for like a decade. I've named each bird I've gotten to know and things like that. What I've noticed over the years is when spring rolls around, even though I have goodies for them, they rarely take anything from me, instead preferring to search for insects and other natural food sources. Birds do indeed continue to forage naturally regardless. I think insects and native seeds would have to be like completely gone in order for them to rely solely on us, and I guess we'd all be in trouble if that were ever to be the case. If you still feel uneasy about providing feeders for birds, think of it like this. Backyard feeders can bring such joy and allow one to get a glimpse into the fascinating, wonderful world of birds, helping people to feel connected to nature. One of the most important things that happen when people feel connected to nature is the need to protect it, inspiring people to get involved in conservation and environmental advocacy. So there you go. You don't need to worry about if feeding birds in your backyard will cause them to become dependent. Enjoy your friendly neighborhood birds and all the wonders and gifts they can bring. So what do you think? Did this video change your mind or help you to feel better about feeding birds? Comment below and let me know. I'll also leave some links in the description below for those who want to read more about it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. Happy birding.